There we go. It's April the 15th. It's a TFS Euro edition with James Horncastle, Alvaro Romeo, Julian Laurent, and Raphael Honigstein. And Bayer, no fear, Leverkusen, our Deutsche Meister. What did the other Woo! words mean? Woo! Well, Bayer, no fear, we stehen zu dir. We, we always support you. Okay. We always have your wow. back. What? Lovely. Quite a yeah. theme tune, that. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Will they have a big barge that they'll be floating down the River Lever or something? Uh, the Rhine, even. Oh, is it the Rhine there? Yeah. yeah. Do they have a boat? The fog on the Rhine. <laughs> uh, they might. I don't know if there's plans for a boat tour, but um, there are plans for a big party on the 26th of May Ooh. after mm. the cup final. Right, which they'll be facing Not Kaiser done just Slaven. yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I mean, we'll talk more about them, what they did this weekend, not just winning, but emphatically smashing it in the key game with a final win over Werder Bremen. Rafa, even Bayern fans, I don't know if you've spoken to any, but even Bayern fans... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any. <laughs> but you know any. <laughs> ...must find it hard to begrudge this Bayern side the title. Yeah, I think with the exception of um, Köln fans and a few traditionalists who dislike the model of Leverkusen because it's one of the first clubs that are set up along different ways. They're 100% owned by the parent company, the biopharmaceutical um, giants rather than the members. Uh, but with the exception of those groups, I think everyone feels that this is uh, a fantastic achievement. Oh, yeah. A bit by, proud, maybe. Yeah, just a team that I think is also very likable. Chevy Alonso is very likable. The people in charge are quite likable. And you can't even start discussing about, you know, whether they got lucky because Bayern were weak or whatever. It's um, on their own merit, uh, an incredible season, and they might just finish the best season ever if they keep going like this. If I had to sort of surmise the general feeling of German football, I think people are fairly happy that there's a new champion mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> after 11 years of Bayern and that uh, Xabi Alonso and Leverkusen have brought a lot of sort of appeal and interest to the league. But this team's going to be broken up, isn't it, Raf? That's what happens in modern football, you know. Just the vultures are circling; they're coming. Mm, yeah, they might be circling, but I don't think they'll they'll have too many bones to pick at, uh, okay. James. If I continue that metaphor, uh, Shabby is staying, Florian Wirtz is staying, Shaka is staying. Of course, you know these are probably the three most important people in this uh, equation. Grimaldo, um, Grimaldo is definitely staying. I think Frimpong. He might be the one that could leave because he's got a release clause and there's so much interest for him. Mm. Although a lot of people want him as a right back and I'm not sure he'd be quite as effective. The wing back system, I think, brings out the best yeah. of him and uh, it might not be quite as uh, suitable for him. Mm, I don't know the exact figure, but I think it's around about 30, maybe 35 million euros. Okay. That's what I've read. <laughs> so it's not, it's not super cheap, but for a... For a good wide player, it's probably affordable. Yeah. But I think that's it. I think that uh, the fact that Alonso is staying has sent such a powerful, positive message to the rest of the squad that they all want to stick together and try one more year. And usually you'd say, okay, this is it. You know, Bayern will come back and maybe Dortmund. But there is a sense that with everyone being a little bit unsettled, a little bit in transition, Dortmund might have a new manager, Bayern will definitely have a new manager, Bayern might have a new team as well next season, that Leverkusen all of a sudden, um, them along with Stuttgart, who I don't think people think that they can push them uh, next season, their first ever Champions League, whatever. Um, a lot of people are beginning to say or beginning to come around to the view that this might not be a one-off, that they could actually go and win it again next year, which wow. would be even more of an achievement. Incredible. We'll talk more about it. By Leverkusen in a bit. Moment of the weekend, though. Raf, would yours be Sunday? The... There was a goal in the third division in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> you did say I was so cross with you for really. Well, no, you did an so amazing much. job yeah, of, of covering it up. Jules, literally nobody Your reaction, picked up. I mean, you couldn't even get the, the club right. I mean, I was so disappointed <laughs> yeah. in you. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. Goal. We're gonna get goal cross again. Goal to see. Goal to see. Yeah. We're gonna get it's so cross easy again. to say. Why, how, I know, how come exactly. we couldn't manage that? I thought exactly. it was goal. <laughs> if that was goal, that would have made more sense. That was that was particularly goal and jewels. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, sorry, moment of the week is, of course, the final minute of the game. Yeah. But, uh, 
the incredible scenes. Uh, but it was very restrained because Xabi Alonso and the team had said, look, let's not ruin the pitch. We still need it. Mm. Um, let's not smash up the stadium. We still need it. Big game on Thursday. Uh, be, I mean, that's a way, but yes. Oh, yeah. um, they're hoping to have another semi-final, of course, in Leverkusen. They want to go unbeaten. Yes. Uh, and a good pitch helps in that respect as well. Mm. And the players, I think, wanted to celebrate, but at the same time understand just how big the game is on Thursday. So Job's not over yet, Raf, as you yourself said. Yeah, handbreaky, I would say. Mm, yeah. I see. Alvaro, what was your moment of the weekend? There are a few, definitely. But are they barge related? Uh, well that that is that is one of the year. Right. I mean, in Spain, okay. that's for sure. Of a, yeah. of a generation. The moment of, of a generation. Of yeah. Yeah. The moment of a century. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a magnificent pr pr procession down the, what's the river? Uh, Nervion. Oh, Nervion. Yeah, the Leva. Yeah. I, can't, I can't believe you said the Leva because now on the river Leva. I was joking, but you never know. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> down the river Bill, as you say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that one. Um, but yeah, my moment of the week will be... Rio Bell. We'll speak about them later. Um, but Atletico de Madrid getting a very nice win over oh, Girona. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, this is a game that uh, mm, consolidates Atletico de Madrid in uh, Champions League spots. Mm. It is likely that the fifth spot won't uh, give access to the Champions League the next season in La Liga. So Atletico needed to win. Just in case Atletico La Bilbao you know, did the job against Villarreal. And they did it in good fashion against Girona. A Girona that is crumbling, we have to say that, especially away from home. And a brace for Antoine Griezmann. Yeah. And a lovely love... roulette as well from Morata to, to, for, to yeah. set up Same one of those ball. goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, because he fought uh, for a ball that looked like it was going out. Mm. Uh, he went for a lost coast. He mm. got the ball very quickly. His cross was excellent. And then uh, Correa, who is not particularly tall, I mean, uh, just produced a beautiful header. Yeah, for me, that's the moment of the weekend. Atletico this, winning. This is Antoine Griezmann was teaching his teammates how to head. Better. And this is what Correa... Yeah, this, this, was, this was great. It what was a great. clinic. Yeah. Well, my Griezmann. well, because Antoine Griezmann, I mean, he's not very tall, but he's one of the best players in La Liga when it comes to heading, I would say. It's all these so. French guys with their heads. Giroud. Ah. Jules, your moment of the week, please. Uh, I would go uh, on Friday night. Okay. Two goals for Georges Mikotadze and Metz. One, the first one, really good. You should check it out. Uh -huh. I'm kidding. Uh, he's an amazing player. And I like Spell the story. <laughs> Mikotadze, he plays for Georgia. He will be at the Euros with Vaz Kelia and uh -huh. uh, Willy Sagnon. It's just, it's just a nice story because he was very good last season when they got promoted to Ligue 1. Then he went to Ajax. The mess that is Ajax. He was not happy there. He only played nine games. Mm. They loaned him back to Mets and now mm. he's called nine in 14. From one Mets to another, exactly. you could say. And then he might keep them up even because that win against Lens oui. is a big help for them to hope to stay up. So Okay. Excellent. James, I guess you'll go for last Thursday and a big triumph for the City A representative Anfield. I'm, your post-game appearance <laughs> I'm referring to. Atlanta were also there. But you know, he makes the extraordinary <laughs> ordinary James Holmka. So that's why he's <laughs> <That's does>. right. <laughs> he should be in the conversation. <laughs> Woo! Morning, the Excellent. Nice moment of the weekend. Yeah. That was on a Thursday. So, yeah, but... Uh, well, actually, my week. moment of the weekend was going to be on Friday night. Okay. Uh, which was after Lazio Salernitana, mm. <laughs> in which one of the most bizarre post-game interviews I've ever seen happened, where Luis Alberto, the Lazio midfielder, basically comes out and they're like, oh, change of manager suits you. Team is now playing a system that gets more out of you. You know, there's a position for you, number 10. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, the future looks good. And he's like, no, I'm terminating my contract. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I've never it. heard a player Amazing. like six or seven games from the end of the season and this guy has just signed a new four-year deal basically say not really directly asked about his future he's like, I'm terminating my contract I never want to take another euro from Lazio seriously yeah and the club was just like hang on a minute he's never he's not told us about this what's going on and so they spent the next 28 48, 48 hours going he can't do that he's got a contract he's got to respect it so where, where is he heading do you think well, he keeps saying, and he said this last summer, he said the summer before, I think he feels like his time at Lazio is over. Mm. And yet the club's very hard to negotiate with. A little bit like, you know, Spurs with Levy and that sort of thing. Like if they want to keep a player, they, they can keep a player. And so he's often sulked and then he's got over it and then he's sulked again and then he's got over it. But he signed a new deal. <laughs> and so, yeah, for, for someone to actually come out and just say, when there's still six or seven games of the season to go, still they, they have a prospect of getting into Europe. They're still in the Coppa Italia semi-finals. For one of their best players to say, yeah, I want to terminate my contract. You never hear a player say that. 
like you know, I'm I'm done. I, 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 it's over for me. And Rosito responded. Yeah. You know, obviously. But you asked where do you think he's going? Mm. I think he wants to go back to Spain. That's. Mm. I think he wanted to play for Sevilla um, at some there. stage, yeah. and so he feels like he's he's not had that opportunity. But like you know, it was just. An incredible interview where the DAZN reporter didn't know what to say. <laughs> he just said, like, the natural journalistic thing to do would be, like, ask why. And he w- he just went, gracias, Luis. <laughs> back, <laughs> back to the studio. <laughs> and everyone in the studio was just like... <laughs> that was he a lost funny moment with a DAZN reporter mm. and uh, Florian Wirtz <laughs> a couple of weeks ago when he was interviewing Florian Wirtz after the game. He said, hey, you had some... Uh, some visitors today at the game, your grandparents. And Florian Vez pauses says, these are actually my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so then the guy goes, ah, um, okay, yeah, but but they, they look good. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, uh, notes. fine. Again. <laughs> <Charlie> <laughs> <notes>. <laughs> Excellent. Well, what a lovely set of moments of the weekend. We've got moments many moments coming up midweek uh, with the Champions League return legs of the quarterfinals. Let's check those out next. All right, Champions League quarterfinal, second legs. Question, is it going to be like last week, do you think? Crazy stuff. 18 goals across the four games. Yeah. Tuesday, Barcelona. We'll be welcoming uh, Paris Saint-Germain de Montjuic. Barcelona 3-2 up from the first game in Paris. Dortmund, meanwhile, 2-1 behind as they host Atleti at the Signal Iduna. On Wednesday, Man City and Real Madrid uh, from their 3-3 draw at the Bernabeu meet again at the Etihad. And it's all square in the other game on Wednesday too, which will see Bayern hosting Arsenal. Rafa, a week ago you were saying you just wanted this tie to still be alive. How alive is it still? Uh, it's very much alive and kicking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the momentum has changed in Bayern's favour. Uh, Arsenal's defeat on, on Sunday wouldn't have helped. They looked a little bit tired, a little bit leggy. And Bayern feel a lot more confident, of course, right. about their chances. A 2 0 win at the weekend of the Köln. Yeah, I mean, the, but, the game itself was not particularly impressive. And I think it didn't come as a huge surprise that they struggled more, actually, in a way, against Köln, opening them up, than they did against Arsenal. Köln. Cool. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, because Köln sat back and made it hard. And right. uh, Bayern enjoyed the space that Arsenal gave them. But of course, it's going to be a different story because they will be. With more possession, they'll have to find the solutions. And, Ar- and Arsenal might play on the break, which might suit them okay. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's still very open, and I don't think this is a foregone conclusion at all. Leroy Sané available for the game because he wasn't on the bench on Saturday. Yeah, they they rested him. He's got a problem, uh-huh. um, a long-standing problem with his um, bone. What is that in German? Pubic bone. Okay with his pubic bone, but um, he did train on Monday, mm. uh, as did Manuel Neuer, who was also rested. Okay. And with the exception of Kingsley Coman, who yeah, sadly sad. really it's got really sad. badly injured right. again, mm. this time his hamstring. Mm-hmm. The Serge Gnabry? Serge Gnabry's out as well yeah. with the hamstring. Um, so Bayern not quite at their best, but mm. still with, with options. Okay. For both teams, kind of now looks like their last chance to save their season, no? Buying out the Pokal. I mean, for Bayern, the yeah. it is definitely the last yeah. chance. Um, probably Arsenal too. Huge game. Still, yeah, but they're still, they're still in, in it, race. I would say. Yeah. They're still in it. Um, but yeah, for Bayern, we've known we've known for a long time that the Champions League is going to be the be, be an end of their season. Of course, the Champions League always, always defines their season. But this time, uh, even more so, because usually by, uh, by this stage of the season, we... We are thinking about beer showers and uh, how they're going to celebrate their nth title, mm. uh, title, but um, it's different this year. And they've given themselves a real chance with a decent performance at, at the Emirates, but it's still basically a game that can go any way, I think. There is not that much between those two teams. Alvaro, how surprised were you with Bayern last year? Tuesday and how how strong do you think their chances are of doing it again? I think they've, they've got a chance. Um, I think the, the turning point of the game, we're not going to review that game, but it was Ben White one-on-one with uh, Manuel Neuer. Had he scored, we would be talking about the different story. 
For me, the big question is whether Bayern will take the initiative or not. Because if they do, I think that sometimes they can uh, be a little bit... Uh, uh, they, they won't flow because uh, I have the feeling that uh, they don't flow a lot when they have the initiative of the game. Whereas Arsenal is always happy to take it. Mm. But is Bayern going, going to let Arsenal uh, have the ball and counter-attack? I don't think that this is proper Bayern at the Allianz. So for me, that's the question. Will Bayern be happy with just counter-attacking or the crowd? I don't think so. No, they can't. They can't play um, the same style. I mean, it was a mix. Sometimes they tried to press high. Sometimes they, they sat back. Um, but they have to be a bit more a bit more active and they have to put the, uh, take the game to to Arsenal. I mean, I think Eric Dyer said it, it, it. It's as if the first game didn't happen in a way because... No, no. It's it's now a one-legged knockout right. uh, at home, so Bayern would have taken that before before the first leg, but now they still they still have to do it. Um, I wonder how Real Madrid feel about their one-legged knockout game coming up at the Etihad uh, that same night, Wednesday. Three three from the first leg. Man City, who've now scored three goals in every single Champions League appearance this time around. I guess more pertinently, last time Real Madrid went to the Etihad, they lost four nil. How? Nervous are they in, in Madrid or how, how confident are they that it's going to be different this time? Uh, I think that they are slightly uh, confident. Uh, Why? They, they don't feel that it's they... It's the Real Madrid, James. Uh, mm. Well, yeah, but uh, um, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but it is true as well. Last season, they lost 4-0. Probably they won't make the same mistakes. And Carlo Ancelotti has spotted what happened last season. Sometimes it's about the brilliance of the opponent. Real Madrid maybe couldn't do more. But I think that um, one thing that uh, history has taught us is that Real Madrid... Uh, competes in every context. So, for example, the other day, I think it was Manchester City dominating the game, especially in the second half, and Real Madrid managed to compete. They pretty much uh, do it irrespective of how the game goes. And I think that uh, they will try probably to, to uh, profit their counter-attacks. The other day against uh, Manchester City at Bernabeu, they double up the left channel mm. with Rodrigo and Vinicius because they knew that Walker wasn't there. For me, that's the big question of the game. Will Kyle Walker play or not? Because that changes a little bit uh, the way Real Madrid may attack as well. And I think that uh, probably Manchester City will impose their style and Real Madrid is adaptable to every style. But if Manchester City puts into practice their style very well, then they are very likely to win it uh, like they did last season. Mm. Okay, it was a crazy game last week. Yeah, more of the same. Two fantastic. comebacks. Yeah, uh, within the game. Uh, this time, Chouameni is not available. Mm. He's playing really well as a centre back. By the what way, a, what a goal he scored at the weekend! Oh yeah, beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, every now and then, he produces. Well, you know that well. Uh, English people uh, shots like that, as he did in the World Cup. But um, him not playing as a centre back opens up the question: Will Nacho play there? Uh, Nacho every time. Mm, he has played this season, he's been a little bit um, prone to errors. And I think that Militao uh, hasn't had enough playing time in his legs, but maybe Carlo Ancelotti plumps for the Brazilian. Okay, big game coming up. Four rail away at the Etihad. And then on Sunday, they're going to be taking on Barcelona in the Classico. Ooh. Yeah. All bit... right, the other game in the Champions League midweek. Didn't... Oh, Jules, I would have loved to have had a camera on you in yeah. that game. Oh my God! So, how what were your emotions two. like doing that? And I had, uh, Darren Fletcher and Lucy Wood were commentating for TNT, sat next to me as well, so right. I could not do too much. Really? Yeah, unfortunately, I still did my bit. You, you know, it was ups and it was downs, and then it was downs. Uh, it was it was a great. I thought it was a great game. Mm. If you were neutral, for example, really, right. if you were a Barca fan, it's even better. Yeah, of course. Um, I was not happy with Luis Enrique's. Tactics in the first half. I like the fact that he changed at halftime and then he was better for a little bit in the second half. And then Xavi also responded to that. I thought it was great on many, many levels. Mm. I expect the second leg on Tuesday to be the same. Also, I'm going with two of my children. So Whoa. I kind of hope that PSG do well. Although, I don't know, I've got not a great feeling about it. They've never overturned a, a tie. In the history before. Okay. But the last time they went to Barcelona, not to Montjuic, yeah. it was a huge win. It was a huge win, but it was the first leg. Yeah. And there was no fans. Right. It was during COVID. But Mbappé was the star and he will have to be the star again on Tuesday. So because. last week, uh, Lequip was particularly scathing for Gigi Donnarumma, who got a two out of ten. Yeah, but he I really don't... annoyed me. I think I cursed the Italians a lot. Did last you? Week. Yeah, what, what was your reaction, Lequip's uh, reaction to the... Fairly invisible, Kylian Mbappe. Too generous. 
in their, no, uh, in their no, play rating. Nice. He got three, didn't he? Three out of ten. Did Mbappe three, get yeah. three? Yeah, yeah three. Wow. Yeah, what do you think? That was, yeah, I thought it was fair. He was disconnected from the team. And mm. I said before the game, this could be his last Champions League game at the Parc des Princes for PSG yeah. because if they get knocked out this week, then this is it. It's over. And and again, and also the fact that everybody at the club, re- again, we're saying like it's on it's on him if he's if he's good and he plays well, right? We will qualify if he's not there or if he's well marked. If if he's not effective, then we won't qualify. So mm. it's even more true now before the second leg. I don't know if Kunde and Arojo or, and Lamine Yamal, the three of them, can contain him as well in the second leg. Kubasi as well, no? Yeah, but that's Kunde. Kubasi is the other side. So yeah. Kubasi has not, not much to do with Mbappe. But if that yeah. defence, wherever, wherever they are, the other side. Kubasi plays left centre-back. Yeah, back. but everyone was talking after it about the job that he did on. Did yeah. he not? No, no, no he not on Mbappe. Mbappe. Overall, he, 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 he played yeah. really well, but I think that he was mainly Jules Kunde. I mean, okay. yeah. he was phenomenal the other day, probably his best game for Barcelona. Magnificent. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we see, I mean, it's done, it's done to him. But I will go there, enjoy it with my kids and hope for the best. You never know with this team because they, I think the PSG are capable to go and win 2-0 in Barcelona. They are also capable of not winning and being knocked out. Mm. I think Luis Enrique at some point, and I love him dearly, need to stop playing like in the surprise. Spanish and then guy. you don't know the Spanish guy. <laughs> you, oh, here we go. You it's get happening. an egg. You get an egg. You don't know what's inside the egg. You don't know the starting lineup. Who he, plays where. It's an absolute joke sometimes. But <laughs> he represents Barcelona values more than the other guys. So, yeah. so I, I really think, to be, to be fair to him. So this was his pre-game press yeah, conference. I think he meant manager for manager. And on that level, he's right. Him as a, as a Barca manager and Xavi as a Barca manager. Right. Ruiz Enrique was more, bar- he won more. I think if Xavi had Messi, Suarez and Neymar up front, <laughs> he would do pretty well. I'm sure. As would you, but, Jules. Uh, yeah, probably. You're right, Horny. But I think people then jumped on it saying like, how can he say that? Xavi is from La Masia, he's there, he played there, blah, 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 which is true. Mm. I think his answer was very much manager for manager, but then he get he get humiliated the it's next day a, by Xavi. So it's like, come yeah. on, you know. The truth is that, uh, the, the thing is that why did Luis Enrique choose to be so sincere yes. uh, when sometimes he just dismisses every question? Yeah. You know, but this time he really wanted to say this. It's was was, this, so one of, was eh? this one of Barcelona's best performances of the season? Uh, well, uh, one of the best performances in Europe in years, I would right. say, yeah, because, uh, you know, you win at that iconic, iconic place, you, you win with a certain style. <laughs> I think that uh, Xavi was one of the winners of the game because uh, first ball that Pedri touches becomes an, an assist for um, for Rafinha. The first time that Christensen contacts with the ball, uh, it becomes a goal for Barcelona because mm. he headed to the to the net. By the way, Christensen won't be there. Uh, What's happened for that corner anyway? Sorry to Donnarumma. riff on your pain. So, uh-huh. I mean, he doesn't Ruma. come for the cross as he no. did in the first half when there was the yeah. clearance on, on the goal line. Twice, two corners in the first half didn't come out. And then that one, I, I, and Zaire Emery is marking Christensen and should do better for sure. But I think Donnarumma has to come out. Yeah. It's weird because it's not I like he lacks size. You know, I mean, he's, he's big, big for goalkeepers. Massive. Yeah, yeah. I don't he's understand. got long arms as well. And yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. He's been having a good season as well. Very good. But then that one, and I guess the first one is at foot as well. And some people in Paris even put the second goal on him, which I think is hard because the ball from Pedri, the volley from Rafinha is good. But maybe he could have come out and close, suddenly close the angle for Rafinha, I don't know. He will have a blinder on Tuesday and then qualify PSG. Yes. Uh, very quickly, Barcelona uh, may be a little bit too light in midfield, by the way, because Christensen is not available, Sergi Roberto neither. So I think that Xavi, there is no way that he will resort to Oriol Romeo. Sergi Roberto is out, Christensen is out. Mm. So Good. Barcelona will probably play with Pedro Gondogan and Frenkie for the first time in a while and uh, the question is whether Fermin will play because he's like a lithium battery even though he he's not well a holding midfielder yeah played well against Napoli yeah or, yeah. A, or a third striker okay so let's see okay let's quickly talk about Dortmund Atletico and then we can hear who's going to be through to the semi-finals Rafa 2-1 down but at home I disagree do not. Who has the advantage in this what well, advantages with Atletico of course but Dortmund finished the game really strongly mm. And um, felt that uh, they might have even had a draw. They hit the um, post twice or the woodwork twice, uh, the bar, in, in fact. And at home, why why shouldn't they win? Why shouldn't they win? Um, I think Atleti are a different side to the cliches and stereotypes that we're used to from over the years. They are more expensive, more open, but at the same time also more vulnerable at the mm. back. So 
um, much less annoying and awkward to play against. But of course, they create more problems for you, um, pressing high and going for it and uh, having that freedom that perhaps in the past they were missing. Even in this game, I think after the two nerf, they'd kept on playing a bit more. Dortmund were really there for the taking, but in the second half, they fell a little bit back upon their sort of old yeah. habits and tried to shut the game down too early. But Dortmund feel reasonably confident. Um, what's annoying is that Sebastian Allaire got injured Ooh. in the Ooh. game against uh, Gladbach, and mm. he was absolutely key when he came on, scored a great goal, held the ball up really well. Phil Crook is on a really poor run. I think it's 10 games without a goal at the moment. And he will have to re lead the line again. So that's a big blow. Um, but yeah, they got a really good win on Saturday. They beat Gladbach away to one in the Borussia Derby with 10 men. Adeyemi got sent off. And Sabitzer with uh, a hat-trick that became just two goals because <laughs> the third one was a, a penalty he took. Mm. But the referee said, hold on, I hadn't uh, blown the whistle. And uh, it actually went to VAR after he had scored. And VR said, no, it's not a penalty. He wasn't <laughs> celebrating the first goal. Is he a former <laughs> Gladbach player or something? Or was he just no, upset? No, he never, he's never very emotional on the, okay. uh, on so the pitch. He's not that kind of guy. So Griezmann is fit. He is, yeah. Yeah, and he, he was banging at the weekend uh -huh. in the, what was it, 3-1 win? Yeah. Yes. 3-1 win. Very nice. What do you think? Uh, Atletico not the best on the road, particularly in Europe. No, uh, of course, uh, I don't know how to or how the numbers in La Liga apply to the Champions League. Let's put it this way, because in the Champions League, they only lost away to Inter. Right, but, then but they the won one in seven, I think. Yeah, in the group stage, they didn't lose away. But in La Liga, uh, the numbers uh, are uh, tremendously bad for Atletico away. I mean, they got 43 points at home and mm. only 18 away in La Liga. So that tells you that they suffer on the road. Um, against Dortmund in the first leg, I think they were tremendously benefited by the fact that they had nine days to rest. Mm. And in the first half, you could see that they, they had like an, an extra engine. Right. But then in the second half, they couldn't cope with that uh, uh, level of pressure, uh, especially level of high press. But for this game, I think that everything is quite tight. PSG gonna have loads of, of will have had loads of time to rest because they and Marseille didn't play this weekend. Lille as well. Yeah. Given Do you a think vibe, it's a good thing. I don't know because we saw Xavi made, Xavi made nine changes though. So and Luis Enrique would have changed the whole team for this like game this weekend. I don't know. I, th I think it's not a bad thing. People can travel. They go away. They spend time with their family. They come back maybe a bit more refreshed. Mm. We we'll see. Okay, who's going through to the semis? <laughs> Or of all of them? Of the four, yeah. Of the eight, rather. Okay, City mm -hmm. and Atleti and PSG. Ooh. I'm saying that because Jules' kids are going and I, I, want, know, I, know. I want his kids to see this. And um, what's the other one? Bayern Arsenal. A uh, Bayern. <sighs> FC Bayern. Anyone disagree with any of that? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> I love Arsenal. Why? Uh, I think it's a, it's a very open game, I think, and it's an advantage for Bayern to be obviously at home and the fans, where they haven't always played great, to be fair, this season. And I think they can play well, but they've got a few players. I think they will miss Nabri and Coman and the pace, and you know you can put Musiala wise, just not the same. But Odegaard is doubtful. Yeah, no, I know, I know. That's, that's going to be And the key. defeat on Sunday for Arsenal, I think, was... Mm -hmm. Big blow. Would we'll be painful. helpful. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think they can do it. So I go City Atletico, mm. PSG, I have to, and then Arsenal. So only one change with Horn. All right. Okay. Hey, next up, let's chat about. So what, them two are like Horn. Well, I said, <laughs> does anybody you disagree? Ask, okay. And you disagree. So you agree the other two are yeah, yeah. so. City Atletico, Barcelona, Bayern. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go. Ample opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go Bayern, Dortmund. City, Barcelona. Backs his Bundesliga points. Nice, nice, huge for the coefficient. Huge, huge, huge. huge. I mean, Arsenal, uh, Bayern, and Leverkusen, West yeah. Ham is big for the coefficient. Very much England so. should still do it. Really, I don't know. Yeah, they have so many yeah. teams. Italy have already practically done it. 
Well, no one sure. talks about it. Italy have done you it. Say Italy yeah. have done Premier it. League have got so many through, but only one of those teams won last week. Yeah, Liverpool week. would be gone. West Aston would be Villa gone. the only team that won out of yeah. five Premier League representatives. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fair. not sure. Anyway, hey, let's talk about what awaits this Thursday in the Europa and uh, Conference League next. Europa League and Conference League on Thursday. Quite the night uh, last week uh, as Roma Milan met at San Siro. Roma 1 0 winners there. West Ham went to Leverkusen and lost 2 0. Benfica hosted Marseille and beat them 2-1. And Atalanta travelled to Anfield and won 3-0. What a night. James, your analysis of that is um, now actually a core text what? in school as part of the national curriculum. Media studies. What, what, what analysis? analysis? <laughs> what analysis? Yeah. Is the, His analysis. Did I miss something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Million. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can quote it more or less, viral. but 4.5 million so people have the watched the analysis. Of what? What? You, listener, have you seen it? If not, do, do you need to repeat anything? Well, I tell you, let's skip forward. We we know what you know, there's Atlanta. A vacancy, there's a vacancy here this summer <laughs> at uh, at Liverpool. There's a vacancy. Oh yeah, I just cannot believe that you know Gasparri's name, yeah. v- which vacancy. really has changed just coaching in Italy for the last fifteen his years. Name. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was fantastic. I hope that Gasparini it was a fantastic kind of night of football, as a... and it was <laughs> lovely to see it bookended by <laughs> some hum. summed up by such a lovely post game analysis for people who might have been just watching that and thinking, "What the he- How did that just happen?" Yeah, there you go. No, Can it they fantastic. do it again? Because the job is not finished. Quite apart from the fact that being three 0 up halfway through a European it's contest, dangerously with yes. with, a, with <laughs> Liverpool for an Italian side. Precedence and all that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Quite it. apart Every from time. that, quite apart from that, <laughs> there's also the fact that last time that Liverpool went to Bergamo, they won 5 0. I know there were no fans there this time. Uh-huh. I'm sure there's going to be an incredible atmosphere yeah. at the Gillis. Mm-hmm. But what do you think is going to happen? Can Atalanta finish the job? Is it going to be a nervous night? I think they can score more goals. And I say that because they had a number of chances to actually score more than the three that they did at Anfield mm. on Thursday night. The first chance of the game actually fell to Atalanta. Pasalic was sort of, you know, one-on-one with uh, Kelleher. And, but I mean, I think Klopp was right in his analysis after the game in which he said, look, we started well and Harvey Elliott hits the bottom of the bar. Darwin is one-on-one and misses. And even at the weekend, I mean, yeah. they had, yeah. what, the highest XG that any team has had that's been one, gone one to one shot. Yeah, that's what I do. So, I mean, at the stadium on Thursday, I did think, okay, at halftime, you see Salah and Zabos like, come on. You're like, oh, right, okay, here we go. And then Diaz comes on. You're like, right, yeah. And Jota as well. And, and, and yet they, and yet Atalanta gained in confidence in the second half. It was... Yeah, they were no longer phased by the occasion. They kind of absorbed it, settled in, and then got more and more confident. So I, I think I, I think Liverpool can win on Thursday, but I just think Atlanta will score. And you know, when you've got a three goal advantage, that's that's a pretty great position to be in historically. But I mean, as you you are right, James. If there's any team that can basically score a load of goals on someone, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let's see. I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to going to Bergamo on Thursday because the stadium has been expanded um, since they started getting into Europe under Gasparini because of all the money he's brought in by developing players who they've then sold on because they've started getting into the Champions League for three years. And also, you know, in those great European runs that they had, um, they coincided with COVID and fans weren't able to go to the stadium. And the, even their group stage games in the Champions League, they played at San Siro. So it's it will be it will be great to see Atalanta get to to have a game as big as this at the Gevis. Is it weird that they're playing on Monday night in the league then? And not Thursday, Sunday, like everybody else in the whole world, which give them a day less to recover for Thursday again. Just so- Yeah. No, I think it is, although City A weirdly has has taken this opportunity a few times now where the teams that play on the Europa League play on the, on the Monday, Monday night. Um, yeah, because Roma but, played a few times on Monday this yeah, season, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, is a, it is a little bit weird, but they they might get some players back as well, Atalanta, because again, that was the, you know, as much as I think the big surprise with Liverpool is that this injury crisis that they've had is now passed. Mm. 
And, you know, they were able to bring on Salazar Bosley. They also, you know, and... Dan, your story making the point in yesterday's podcast, actually, that it's almost like a game of buckaroo, where the more <laughs> players that Klopp puts back into the squad, the worse they do. <laughs> okay, mm, interesting. Nice. Yeah. Wow, I haven't played buckaroo in a lot. I that mean, didn't do get people play buckaroo. million views, but I liked it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but you know, Atalanta weren't at full strength either on, no. on Thursday, um, and that, I was worried with the you know the goalkeeper change because he keeps playing Musso in in the Europa League, and Musso was a player that they spent a lot of money on, in the anticipation that this guy would have been really good with Udinese was going to be Argentina's number one, and it never happens for him because he makes big mistakes. Emi Martinez becomes Argentina's number one, and you know Kaniseki has been very good for Atalanta. So he wasn't playing. Scalvini wasn't playing either. Um, but yeah. Really, so, well, let's see. Uh, I, the the front two will have to put in the same sort of p- performance, not only in front of goal that they did on Thursday, but also off the ball, where they were incredible in terms of just running down everything. Great, great press that right. Atlanta had. They played tonight. Liverpool, we saw, suffering another disappointment, and one which actually Klopp put down in part too, the impact of Thursday's uh, heavy defeat from uh, at the hands of Atalanta. The other games, anyway, coming up on Thursday with Atalanta's strong favourites to make the semi-finals are, as mentioned, uh, Marseille hosting Benfica at the Velodrome, which you flagged up, the fact that the Velodrome is going to be a factor. Will it be enough of a difference with Benfica 2-1 up from the first leg and Marseille on a run of five straight defeats now? Yeah, not a great form. And did play well in the first leg? A little bit in the second half, a bit better in the second half, and Obama Young scored to make it 2 1. They were 2 0 down, and it looked like there was no way back for them. So now they've got that little lifeline, which is good. And the velodrome is going to be, I mean, you, if you don't watch the game, you don't have to watch the game, but watch just the, the start of it when you see the stadium and the players coming in, because it would be something very, very special, I think. And then let's hope that the crowd and players like Obama Young, like the leaders in that team, can carry them at least. Maybe two extra time. I, I struggle to see them winning 2-0 or more than that. So it might be a case of extra time and more. Okay. But I think they can They can certainly take them to extra time. They can win 1-0, not concede. As we've seen Benfica this season, but in blowing moment, hot and cold, really. At the moment, they're very much on the hot blowing business. They've they've last seven games, they've won six of them. The only one they didn't was True. the defeat to Sporting. So. And to go back to your question about mm. not playing, Marseille didn't play. Benfica mm. changed... Roger Schmidt changed the whole team. Yeah. Pretty much, I think only two players were still in the starting lineup this weekend and they were on Thursday. So they, they got a good rest too, the starters. Excellent. All right. Delicately poised then, we'll call that one. Yeah. As probably is the Roma Milan game at the Stadio Olimpico. Milan this weekend had a bit of a wobble at Sassuolo, a 3 3 draw. Milan were 2 0 down within 10 minutes. Fabulous goal. Pinamonti finishing off. I think that was the opener from Sassuolo. Yeah, yeah. the first goal. Pinamonti who came through at Inter mm. and had Sassuolo won that game, then Inter would have only needed a point in next Monday's derby to clinch the Scudetto. They can still clinch it if they beat Milan uh, on Monday, but so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, crazy game, in part because Milan rotated a lot on the back of what happened on Thursday, Thursday night. And you look like, you know, Simon Kier looks like an old age pensioner uh, who'd been let out to play a game of football and uh, and, didn't, and didn't do very well. They took advantage of that. Simon Kier home should be. <laughs> 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 Simon Kier and the community. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, Milan, you know, they came back, they scored loads of goals. They had like two or three goals disallowed. Chukweze was like offside by the tiniest of margins twice. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I think this game's still open. Last 15 minutes of the first leg, um, Milan felt that they could have got something. Even De Rossi said we defended like a small team. You know, we sort of backed off in our right. own penalty area. Milan felt that they should have had a penalty for Tammy Abraham handling the ball. Um, but yeah, that's a yeah. This could be a big week for Milan's coach Stefano Pioli because if you go out of the Europa League, which has become very much their ambition, they'd never won it before. They wanted to win this as a trophy. And then on the Monday, you play Inter in the derby. It's your home derby, and they can win the league against you. Is uh, Not a good look. Not good. Not oh, good. Okay. Roma, meanwhile, who won the first leg at San Siro with another storming header from Gianluca Mancini. This yeah. time around, were 1-1 with Udinese with about 17, 18 minutes still to go in their game. 
this weekend when the, the, the match was actually had to be suspended when Roma's Evan and Dicar went off uh, went went down basically with what looked like a serious kind of heart problem what do, do we know now what what hit him uh, it's a very good question James because it is something that hit him ah. uh, he he kept being uh, elbowed by Udinese's striker Lorenzo Luca the oh. towering Lorenzo Luca kept it getting these uh, knocks to the chest and he goes down he feels chest pain and so he's at that moment in time doesn't know what's happening to him. He's never felt that way before. And so yeah, De Rossi calls for medical attention, get on the pitch. They go on with a defibrillator. They don't in the end have to use it. They stretcher him off. He gives the thumbs up, but the players are all worried. They're like, we've seen this happen before in Italy. Don't want to happen. Again, he goes to hospital. The team, after the game was uh, suspended and postponed, uh, also go to go and see him. And, you know, I think at the time of recording, he's due to be discharged this morning because and the briefing has been that Roma ruled out any heart trouble. It, mm. was, it was just the case of continuously taking this kind of touch-tight physicality from Lorenzo Luca of being hit in the chest over and mm. over again. With that, bad friend Dicker's ticker. <laughs> Yeah, very good, James. Or so, so I mean, that's encouraging. Yeah. That um, you know, if if those reports are true, that it wasn't anything to do with his heart; it was just taking a pounding to his sternum over mm. and over and over again. Then, yeah, that's that's positive. So, but at the same time, don't know what his availability will be for uh, the second leg um, against uh, against Milan. Smalling, Smaldini played um, in the first leg for the first time in a long time. And you have to say, uh, De Rossi, as much as people think that De Rossi's run since he's been in charge of Roma has been kind of just vibes, um, tactically brilliant, I thought, against uh, Milan. The first, you know, in terms of... What did he do? Well, like, the difficulty when you play Milan is their left-hand side of Teo Hernandez and, and Rafa Leao. So De Rossi basically ensured that they just played on the right all the time. <laughs> And that all of the football was played on the right. So you just completely take it away from those guys. And it created lots of problems for Milan on the right with, you know, sort of Zeki Selic playing there, Steven El Shawari playing there, and tied up all the play on that side. And uh, it worked. He's showing in, in, in quite a few games, although, you know, he, he's very humble when he, he gets it wrong, that he's a smart guy. I mean, he was as a player and he, he's proving to be as a coach. So um, let's see. It could be another Roma Leverkusen semi final, right? It could be. Of course, Leverkusen. Yeah. Happy to go, James. Yeah, we yeah. should definitely Le do this again. Leverkusen 2 0 up as they travel to the London Stadium on Thursday. We'll come on to Xavi Alonso and his team's prospects in London next. All right, by Leverkusen smashing Werder Bremen at the weekend 5 0 candy party. Candy party Anfang. The party now can start. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Not a candy party. Not a candy party. Disappointing. Take you to the candy okay. show. Yeah. Nice. 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 Well, it's the um, <laughs> London Stadium that you're right. visiting. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, this game, I think mm. we should mention for mm. any Liverpool listeners that mm. uh, Naby Keita mm. was supposed to be in the squad, mm. but when he found out that he was not playing Ooh. and starting 11, he went home and uh, drove home instead. Didn't go on the bus. Good Lord. Yeah. Which has it, not gone down yeah, that well. well. Mm. Um, and there's going to be a decision made on his future. He hasn't been able to play a lot of football either, uh, thanks to recurring injuries. But um, this might just be the end of this less than happy stint at the Visa Stadium. I see. Well, it was huge at the weekend. It's been an incredible season. What are they on now? 43 games mm -hmm. unbeaten. Who's done better than that? You've got... Milan went 58 league games in a row between 91 and 93. Arsenal, 49 in the league. Mm -hmm. In terms of all competitions, Conte Juve did 42 in all in 11-12 in all competitions. Celtic, though, I think are the high watermark on this. 47 league and cup games in the 2016-2017 uh, season. You can talk about the respective competitiveness of those matches but yeah extraordinary stuff game number 44 sees them against West Ham 2-0 mm -hmm. up from the first leg 
Rafa, West Ham beaten 2-0 this weekend at home by Fulham. Yeah, they were because huge favourites to do it. Um, West Ham sh have shown that they can be Bundesliga sides at home, of course. They smashed Freiburg 5-0. Yeah. Leverkusen a different proposition, though. Much stronger team. And, yeah, the way things are going. Unless they have a bit of a hangover after the festivities mm. on Sunday. From the candy party. Yeah. Candy party. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would think they... No Paqueta okay. suspended, no, no Emerson Paqueta. suspended, no Bowen injured. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's impossible. No so problem. the treble very much on. Woo! From Until Roman knocked them out. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah, of course. Yeah. As they did last year. Yeah. So from whatever happens, I mean, just winning the title itself for the first time in their 120 odd years of, yeah, of 120 history. 120 years, yeah. Not just that. It's not just, a, I mean, because they're a big German side and biggish. They've won yeah. the title after a long period of buying dominance, but it's more than that. It's where they were when when Xavi took over. Yeah, they were slightly in a false position because they were in the second 17th. From bottom. Yeah, they were in the 17th best stroke, second worst team in, in the Bundesliga when he took over, but in the table, right. things were pretty grim. But I think that was part of Xabi Alonso's intelligence, picking a team where he knew there's going to be some improvement almost automatically because they were so far below their real standards under uh, Suane in the second mm. in the second season. And, of course, he's made them much better with the help of some fantastic signings. Every single signing has come good. Every single signing, Simon Rolf has told me, um, for a piece I did with uh, Sepp Stafford Blur on mm. the background of the um, Leverkusen championship winning season, that it was unusual in the fact that in the sense that they got all of their main targets. So they wanted Shaka in midfield, they got Shaka. They wanted Grimaldo on the left, they got Grimaldo. They wanted Boniface up front, they got Boniface. This usually never happens because you can't agree with the player, you can't agree with the uh, with the selling club. But it all worked out. And of course, um, they added to what was already a pretty good side and went to another level. As I said earlier, this is not a case of last year where Dortmund so nearly won it because Bayern were abjectly poor. Right. Um, this is Leverkusen on their own just being incredibly good. And they could finish in the 90s in right. terms of the points. So we're talking... Go back in time. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But we, we're talking about sort of Guardiola levels of, of brilliance, of consistency, something that Bayern post-Guardiola haven't managed either. Right. So it's... It defies words in many ways what they've done. Yeah, one thing that uh, is really remarkable about Leverkusen this season, I mean, I haven't watched them as much as uh, some other people, but it's the variety of attacking uh, patterns that they've got when they have the ball on the, in the final third. I was amazed against Karabakh about they tried everything uh, for the last 10 minutes until they won that game, mm. but they tried low balls to the penalty spot. Uh, they open up to Grimaldo. Then players from the second line midfielders were appearing in the box as well. So it wasn't the kind of thing that at some point says, you know what, it's impossible to win against uh, 11 players defending. Mm. No, no, no. They had the variety of resources just to create different attacks. So Karabakh was like, hang on. I mean, I don't know what they are going to do next. They weren't predictable at all. It was very, very, very amazing, really. Mm. All right. No fear, as they say. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. All right, well, uh, that's who West Ham are entertaining on Thursday evening in the Conference League. Meanwhile, you've got Lille hosting Aston Villa. Villa 2-1 up from the first leg. Jules, you were there. Yep. Fiorentina and Victoria Pilsen meeting in Florence. Nil-nil that tie so far. Club Bruges have a one-goal lead as they visit Pauk, who are bidding to make it through to the final in Athens, of course, as are Olympiakos, who have a 3-2 lead as they visit Fernabashi, where there'll be an incandescent atmosphere, no doubt. Uh, Fernabashi having a slightly stormy time of it, lying second in the uh, Super League in Turkey, amid all sorts of controversy. And Turkish Super League actually just announced they're going to appoint foreign VAR uh, officials because of the doubts raised about the reliability the impartiality, perhaps, even, of yeah. the uh, homegrown. In a neighboring con a neighbor country like Greece, they brought the referees from Spain. There you go. Just to call oh, the big I, games. I don't know where the Turkish are going to get their refs from. Uh, what about Lille, Aston Greece. Villa? Greece, perhaps? Not. <laughs> no. Uh, Lille, Aston Villa. Jules, what awaits at the stade? Pierre Morois. It'd be great. Great atmosphere to start with. Jimbo, 50,000 fans. Uh, I thought the Lille fans... 2,000 of them that were in Birmingham were really good. 
Um, I took the train from Birmingham to Witten, which is where you get off, or Aston, but we got off in, at Witten. They put a lot of really good atmosphere on the, on the train. And then in the stadium as well. And to be fair, I didn't expect them to have more possession than Villa, more shots, more shots on target, higher mm -hmm. expected goals. And they did. They missed big chances and Martinez was amazing in goal for Villa. So I think this would be interesting. I expect Villa to go through and they should really. But Lille, like I've said before, the first leg will give them a good one for the money. Again, Excellent. Excellent. did in the first leg. Mm -hmm. You going along on Thursday? Yes, I'll be there. Yeah, you can watch it on TNT. Let's see if Paolo Fonseca can make the... Ordinary yeah, but you know what I would say, just to finish quickly, <laughs> for him, it's important because I think it's a bit of a kind of a test and of a, um, how do you say, you know, like a, like an audition right. for English clubs. Same for Jonathan David, for example, who was really disappointing in the first leg because he missed chances and he tried, I think, too hard to impress people because he knew that a lot of English clubs were keen on him or even Italian clubs, but especially in England because we were in England, were looking at him. And I think the second leg, again, is another audition for Fonseca who really has done amazing and deserves a big job. Like, not that Roma was not a big job, but like a big job, for example, mm -hmm. in England. And for, for someone like Jonathan David, this is also a big game to show that in those kind of games, you can be good and you can be decisive and you can score and be important. And his future could also depend on some performances like, like the one that he, he hope, hopefully for him will have on Thursday. Very good. Uh, there was a huge game in Liga this weekend, though, and we'll be getting onto that amidst other news next. All right, next week we've got the Clasco in Spain. James, you were mentioning there's the Milan derby on Monday night. Milan with the 3-3 draw this weekend against Sassuolo. Inter also held to a draw by the remarkable Cagliari, mm. who came from behind twice in that game, no? Yeah. He could have had a couple of big chances to win it, Verdi, in the uh, final minutes. But Cagliari now beaten Atalanta and held into it to a draw at San Siro in back-to-back -back weeks. Remarkable from Ranieri. Yeah, they score late goals. Uh, Viola, uh, who they, they picked up, I think, from Benevento, a really tricky little player, um, keeps turning up with big moments for them. And yeah, Ranieri, ever since he basically went to the club and said, guys, I'm quitting. Uh, I, I think you need, you need someone else. And they basically said, no, boss, don't go, don't go. Um, They've been excellent. It's the kind of like Chavi effect, you know, in that it's kind of galvanized the squad. Some people said, did he do it on purpose? Because he, you know, wise old Claudio knows yeah. that this 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 would bring about the kind of reaction that he's got. Um, but yeah, um, extraordinary because again, sort of Inter looked like they were going to get the win. That would mean that would, they would only need what two results out of three in order to close the close the title race on, on Monday night, they could have, you know, drawn if, uh, against Milan had they won against Cagliari. But no, Cagliari did Milan a bit of a favour. So, yeah, good on Claudio. Very good. Four points clear now, I think, of the drop. It's very Cagliari. tight down the bottom. Mm. Apart from Salernitana, who are very mm. adrift, um, all the, I think there's maybe six teams within Everybody got four points. points. Lecce won. Yeah. Uh, Frosinone got a good draw in Napoli. Yeah, you've got five teams Sassuolo within two points of each other from Udinese, who've got that game in hand against Roma. Verona as well, yet to play on the Monday, but Udinese, Empoli, Verona, Frosinone, and Sassuolo, all within two points. And two of them will be going down with Sassuolo, possibly even Cagliari, who are four points clear. But hmm, all right, lovely stuff. Now, speaking of teams who were in trouble, but have gone roaring up the table, perhaps no side represents that kind of trajectory anywhere in Europe this season, more than Lyon. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Pierre Sage, Stone Wise. Stone Wise. More points. He's... Sarge and the squad. Sarge and the squad. Yeah. They've got more points than yeah. anybody else in Ligue 1, even, mm. more, even PSG. They're in the final of the Coupe de France. They're in the final of the Coupe de France against PSG, as we said, and they won this game. How? I don't know. So this was the game against Brest yeah. uh, at home. Yeah. Uh, they go 1-0 up and then they go 3-1 down. Yeah, three goals in eight minutes they considered after the hour mark. And Brest have been a great team. We said they've got uh, Roman del Castillo, <coughs> who was born in Lyon, went through the Lyon Academy, never played for them because they just didn't think he was good enough. So had to go through you know, that usual story through local, lower leagues and smaller teams. And now he comes back to Lyon with Brest, who mm. are second in the table and has an incredible game, two goals, one assist. They're cruising and we're getting like towards the end of the game, Lyon scored to make it 3-2. And after that, it's just complete crazy because like I said, make it 3-3. Three, three. 
And you've got two red cards, which is one of the big discussion in France right. today. Harsh on the very breast harsh. Play. So mm. Lismel who shots, uh, sorry, Lismel who has a shot, uh, the keeper saves it. But as he's shooting, Tagliafico comes to kind of tackle him. So Lismel who falls on the ground, Tagliafico is trying to literally carry him to put him back on his feet, right? Uh, which you obviously can't do. Mm. And Lismel who just stands back up and gets a second yellow and a red. So same for Tagliafico. And Eric Roy, the breast manager after the game, saying like, you can't send off somebody who was actually grabbed on the floor by the opponent, sorry, Rob, and then mm. kind of thrown out. Uh, he was a good point. You know, L'Equipe now uh, do ratings for referees as well in every game. Today. That's how Stéphanie Frappard got one out of 10 the other day. Oh. <laughs> and Mathieu Vernis got one out of 10 again Ooh. last night Ooh, because la, la. he got everything wrong. Brest should have had a penalty. The Brest goalkeeper should have been sent off. It was a terrible performance from the referee. But in the end, Clément Tepin got absolutely panned by Pioli after the Milan uh, Did he? Roma. Did Roma, yeah. yeah. The other I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. And then in the end, Ainsley, the end, Ainsley met them nice. So, uh, what minute was this? 106th yeah. minute. The latest goal ever scored yeah, in Liga. Ever, ever. And it, it is a penalty this time. Yeah, point. it is a penalty. Uh, the goalkeeper barged into Lacazette. G gets kicked in the head as well, yeah, doesn't he? he has to come off. off. So, it's not him taking the penalty, otherwise he would mm. have taken the penalty. Step forward. <laughs> Ainsley Maitland Niles, yep. who did an interview in L'Equipe on Saturday. And the guy goes like, do you know what Swiss knife is? And and Maitland Niles said, no, I've got no idea. So oh, that's what we say in France, which I, I thought you said it in England yeah, as well. Swiss pen knife. Yeah. 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 But Maitland Niles said, no, I don't know. What is it? And he said, well, it's when you can play, every, we can do everything, so you can play everywhere. Mm. And he goes, oh, no, in England, we just say like versatility. And I was like, okay, I thought that existed. But anyway, and then he takes the penalty Cool as a cucumber, as you say, and then scores it. Incredible. Yeah, they don't say that in England. No? Okay. <laughs> I, I thought I heard it somewhere. It must have been in France. Cool as a cucumber. <laughs> wow. And it's a 4-3 win for <laughs> Lyon, who are now seventh in the table. They're only three points behind the European position. Yeah. So even if they don't win the French Cup, right. it will add an extra position because it will be PSG winning. Right. <laughs> so then they have very much a chance somehow. When they were bottom of the table and... Uh, an Italian manager, yeah. I'm not surprised. Uh, now they can, it will be the greatest escape, really, from Stone Wise and in, in probably history of France football. Who are they playing next weekend, Jules? PSG, Sunday PSG. night at the Parc des Princes. Oh, weekend. Go. Yeah, El man. Clásico. Just big game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything in Germany? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All to play for, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> top, the, the race for top four is still very hot. Mm. Leipzig, nice. Leipzig one. All right, well, we'll yeah. talk about that next week then, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's been a busy show. Busy show. Many, many thanks to you all for taking part. Uh, James Horncastle, Alva Romeo, Raphael Honigstein, Julian Laurence, Dom and producer Charlie in the booth. And you, listener, we'll see you next Tuesday. And now the formula is here, it's goodbye. The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around, and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.